Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So today we will talk about the interview questions which are generally asked in Selenium. So there are many questions which I have chosen. So a few of them I have written as per my experience and a few of them I have different from different blogs so that nothing is missed when we are preparing for the Selenium interview. So right now I will just go through you with the part one and then there will be different parts of this Selenium interview question. Uh, here I will try to cover around 30, uh, 30 Selenium interview questions. Okay, so let's go ahead. So the first question which anyone can ask is what is Selenium? So here what you have to do when you are explaining, you have to explain it clearly that Selenium is a suit of tools for automating the web testing, for doing web testing. And you can also say that Selenium is a collection of the APIs, which is a better answer. And it helps us to automate the websites. Okay, so it's a collection of APIs. All right. Now, the second question, how do you find an element using Selenium? So you know already, so these are all the way through which you can find an element using Selenium. Like you can find the element by ID. You can find the element by name by tag, attributes, CSS, link text, partial link text, and XPath. Okay. Now, the third question is explain what is assertion in Selenium. All right. So you can say the assertion is used as a verification point. It verifies the state of application confirm of what is expected. So in a simple term, you can also say that assertion is something through which we can check the expected thing with the actual output. And if my assertion fails, my test case also get fails. Okay. Now the next question is type of assertion and their difference. So you know that uh, type of assertion we have is a soft assertion and a hard assertion. Okay. So test ng supports soft assertion and hard assertion both and JUnit only supports hard assertion. The difference for the difference is what you can do. You can just see the video which I have shown you where I have shown you the code, how we do it. And if you see there, the code which we write for a hard assertion is assert dot assert true. And there are many other methods besides assert true. But we just write one line there assert dot assert. OK, and you know that in my hard assertion, whenever my assertion get failed, it terminate that method then and there. OK, in soft assertion, we you know write a code something like soft assert assert equal to new soft assert. First, we declare an object of the soft assertion and then we give something like soft assert dot assert true. So what will happen that when this line will execute, it will not fail your test case if the assertion is failing. Let's say you have write one more place assert dot assert to if that is also getting failed, it will not fail the method. At the very end, when you do assert dot soft assert all at that time only, it will go ahead and it will fail your test case if the previous two asserts are failed. OK, so it's always better to use the soft assertion when you have to verify more than one things in one test case. For example, when you are verifying the footer links of your web page, it's always better to use a soft assertion. But we have to use a hard assertion when my other conditions are dependent on the first condition. For example, if I want to log in and I need to verify if my login is done and then I need to see if my login is done, I am reaching at the home page and I'm verifying the contents of the home page in the same method. So if my login failed, there's no point of executing the program. So we can do a hard assertion there. Okay, sorry for the wallpaper. All right, uh, use of XPath. Okay, so why to use the XPath? So you can explain that the XPath is one kind of, uh, you know, a way through which we can find an element. It's a, you know, strategy through which we can find an element. And it is mainly used when we are dealing with the dynamic elements. Okay. 
and explain bit difference between the single code single and double slash in xpath so you know that single slash is the x is the absolute xpath and double slash is the relative xpath in the single slash you have to you know give from the beginning of the document so you have to give everything like html you know comma uh, sorry slash then all the other things which come in html you have to give that you have to give body and all the path you have to give for or your single slash uh, xpath but when you're using a double slash that's called the relative xpath and for that you can always you know start it from anywhere from any node you can start that i have already explained you how to you know uh, write the xpath in my videos please see that so that you can get more confidence okay all right so somebody can also ask you that what are the technical challenges which you see in selenium so in simple words you can say selenium only supports web based application right it does not support your desktop application if there is some desktop application it will not support that selenium cannot do bitmap comparison so selenium does not have any api through which you can do the bitmap comparison it is possible to do the bitmap comparison by using some third party APIs, but not the Selenium. Okay. And the reporting. So Selenium does not provide a way through which the reporting can be done. There are some frameworks and there are some other reporting which can be done. For example, TestNG, uh, you know, provides a framework through which it can give us a report, but not the Selenium. Extend report is something which can give us a report also, but not the Selenium. So Selenium by itself does not give us the reporting capabilities. Okay. Now also that uh, as Selenium is an open source, there is no vendor support for the Selenium. Okay. Which and uh, vendor support means example we have a QTP for that. That's a commercial tool. That's a paid tool, but you get at least a vendor support in that okay because in selenium if you get an issue then you cannot reach out to any company to resolve that issue you have to reach out to open forums to resolve that issue all right in selenium there's no object repository and the maintainability of an object becomes difficult okay so the first question is what is object repository so the place where we keep all our objects of a page that's called the object repository so the selenium if you know i have explained you while uh, you know explaining you the page object pattern that we collect all the uh, locators into one page that is called the object repository you can also do one thing instead of collecting in a page in a java page you can collect them into some property file also so that is called an object repository so selenium it is difficult because there is no out of the box object repository in selenium we have to create by our own and we have to maintain it but in the qtp they are already providing it okay verify between very uh, difference between the verification and asserts all right so as I explained to you for the asserts that asserts will fail your method if it get failed but verification means you are just verifying it you are not doing any assertion there so let's say if you're using if else condition in that case you are only verifying you know something is getting passed or fail something is getting return or not but you will not terminate your method okay all right can we use the click command uh, with the screen coordinates yes we can use so we have a method called click at in which we can give a locator inside the click at method and also the chord string all right advantages of selenium so i think you already know about that that it supports c sharp php java perl python and many other languages it support all the mostly all the operating systems like window linux mac and uh, it has very powerful method to locate an element like xpath and css and for you know that selenium you know the community of selenium is very large you get a support of selenium from everywhere and it is also a community supported by google all right and you know that google is one of the big company so we have a community support good community support for selenium why tester should opt, opt for selenium and not qtp so the first reason is selenium is an open source while qtp is a commercial tool right and selenium is used especially for testing web-based application while qtp can be used for testing client-server application also 
all right selenium supports all like firefox i opera safari whatever browser name you take selenium supports that but qtp is limited to internet explorer so there are some you know uh, in qtp they are working on that they support some more browser but till now they are working on internet explorer okay selenium supports many programming languages like ruby perl python various qtp support only vb script so you know this is what we have learned from our previous answer also all right now what is thread.sleep method do so you can simply explain that thread.sleep will stop the current thread for the specific period of a time it is only done once okay so what if you know about threading what happened that whenever we are run in our program it runs on thread if by default it run on the main thread but if you want we can execute our program on multiple threads also if you want to do uh, you know our uh, if you want a parallel execution we have to run on multiple threads so that is supported by test ng framework also okay but by default it run on thread main thread so whenever you give thread.sleep your main program gets stopped for a while it gets stopped for the seconds or the milliseconds which we have given so this is the syntax of that okay all right so what are the features of testng uh, so if you know that testng is a testing framework which is based on j unit and n unit and uh, it's support for you know why it is used because it support many of the annotation which you know that before method after method all the other annotations which we have seen it support data driven testing you can see we can parameterize into the test ng by the different uh, different tags and it has a flexible test configuration you can configure your test which you want to run which you want, don't want to run through the xml uh, through the test in your xml and it has a re ability to you know it has ability to re-execute your failed test cases so that is about test ng what is the difference between implicit weight and explicit weight so guys you know i have explained in detail there are four videos for implicit and explicit weight please go and check it out in short implicit weight you have to set a timeout and the timeout will be the entire life of your driver that's mean if there's no element is found i have given i have given an example i have given a timeout of 10 seconds if no element is getting populated in 5 seconds it will wait till 10 seconds 10 seconds if it get populated like on sixth or seventh second, you know, the my program will move forward. But if in case it is not able to find out within the 10 seconds, then it will give me an exception. So that's an implicit weight and that is for all the elements. Explicit weight is specifically for one element. So if we want to have some different timing for one element, we have to give explicit weight. Okay. All right. So. All right. For the frames. What will happen that when you we are working on the frames and there is no id given for any frame so as you know in xpath you know there is a way through which we can find anything through the tags so we can simply give by.xpath and we give iframe here so if how many whatever the frames are there it will get written it may return a list of the frames and we just need to iterate through the list of the frames to locate an element in that particular frame okay and question number 16 what is the difference between find elements and find element so you know that find element is finding only one element find elements in finding a list of the elements simple okay what is the difference between data driven framework and the keyword driven framework okay so what happened when we are working on the data driven framework we don't keep the data inside our scripts we we logically divide our scripts and we physically divide our scripts also and our data also so mostly data remains either in some property files or either in some excel files and we keep the script separately data can be for the input and it can be to check the results but it is keeping separate keyword driven framework is something in which you know uh, we create some keywords and we create a test plan into an excel and we give a keywords there okay so any manual tester can go ahead and run the excel sheet so there is a button which we can create on excel sheet to run program that will run the excel sheet and what this excel sheet will do this will call the script okay so this will call the script in the, in the script there is an engine 
and that engine will go ahead read each and every row and according to the keyword it instantiate a class it instantiate an object on the runtime and this is how the keyword driven frameworks work so till now i have not created any any video for keyword driven framework but i will let you know how to do it data driven framework we have already done when we were uh, you know uh, seeing the video of how to read the data from excel so this is the way we can create data driven framework for keyword driven framework i will create uh, you know a different uh, excel sheet i will create a different video for that okay all right so in this the 18th one is explain how you can log in into the site if it's showing any authentication pop-up for password and username. So what happens normally when we go to any website like uh, uh, Facebook, it gives a page to us to type the username and password, right? But some of the website does not even, you know, tells you to type the username and password on their login screen. As soon as you hit the URL, you get some windows pop up and it says to pass the type the username and password there. And Selenium cannot do that. Selenium cannot, you know, work on the windows pop up. So what you can do, you can pass the username and password in the URL. Okay, so you have to type the username colon password and then you have to give at the rate URL there. All right. Uh, explain how to assert the text of a web page so they are generally asking for you know the syntax which I have already told you assert dot assert equals and then you can give the expected result and the actual result so that can be asserted if it's a soft assert I have already given you the example of soft assert what is object repository so we have talked about this object repository is something where all the locators are placed right so in QTP they're already providing it but in selenium we have to create it so guys whatever you know what most of the interview questions which I have covered I have already created a video for this okay so if you see all my videos I am already covering all these topics there this is just for a reference purpose that before you go to the interview you know just you know you can just you know, go through it but it doesn't mean that you just go through these and you don't practice what I have told you in the videos okay so you have to practice whatever I have told you in the videos again and again so that you know you can uh, you can get habitual for that and you can make it make use of it when you're working on your project because there is no use of just preparing for the interview and not you know practicing what I have given in the video because the interview will always know because you know they are very smart the people when they take the interview one word or one sentence you are telling them incorrectly they will know that you have just gone through the interview questions and you don't have a knowledge uh, in the deep of selenium so my advice is you can go through this interview question but only just before your interview the other time please go ahead practice uh, the selenium either you can follow my video or somebody else video but be honest to yourself so that you can also get confidence when you are facing some interviews all right so that's it for now and i will create some more videos uh, for this interview because this is part one i believe there would be at least two to three parts for this all right so if you like the video hit on the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and share with your friends if you like it and uh, okay one more thing uh, so if you think that there is some question which you want to cover I have not covered yet let me know in the description section I will put the link of this web page also in the description section all right all right thanks a lot so have a great day thank you for watching